imagine a world where everyone has access to human organs. Can you imagine a world where animals are no longer used to test new medicines? I not only imagine this world, I believe it. I believe it because I have seen a glimpse of it. And I'm here to tell you what I've seen. It takes seven to 10 years to develop a new drug. And it's costing us about $3 billion. These costs we're all sharing. But do you know who is the biggest loser here? And who is ultimately paying the highest price? It's the patient that needs her medication and keeps on waiting and waiting and realizing that that medication might not come through. That that medication might fail in the end of the development process. Imagine that we can develop drugs without using animals. We will be able to provide the cancer patient, the patient with Parkinson's disease, not only with a hope, but with a treatment. Imagine if I told you that there is a way to test new medications in human tissue without using humans. Would you believe me? Sure. <laughs> well, something, I, something that we have understood clearly here is that we are failing, but here's the problem. We're not failing fast enough. We're failing too late in the development process. But how can, we, how can we fail fast? Well, we need better tools to fail fast. And here is where we come in. We have developed 3D bioprinting technology, which allows scientists around the world to bioprint human tissues and organs on demand. Imagine the impact that we can do together. Now, these tissues have also have already found applications. Applications such as skin tissue models, liver tissue models. It's already happening today. I was introduced by this to this technology in 2008, I was introduced to the field of tissue engineering, and that's when I came to Sweden. I was introduced by two of my mentors while pursuing my master's degree in biomedical engineering. When I was introduced to this field, I knew what I had to do. It was like love at first sight. I just couldn't see myself doing something else, so I went right at it. Mechanical engineer, just finished his bachelor's. No idea about biology. The last biology course I had taken was back in high school, 10th grade, all professor, all teacher, so I didn't really listen. And, but I knew something. I knew that I just had to be part of this movement, and I wanted to influence it. Didn't have the tools, but I knew I wanted to be part of it. So, when I started studying, I showed up to my course, Biomaterials. And I remember coming into this classroom, similar to this, and hearing the material. I couldn't understand anything. What is this foreign body response, blood coagulation cascades that they're talking about? It was, wh what language is this? I do not understand. That created in me a motivation, a passion to after classes, go on, immerse myself into all the material I could find, whether it was books, getting lost in Wikipedia, getting lost in YouTube, 
in order to absorb as much as I could to understand something in class. For the second time in my life, I felt lost in a classroom. The first time was as a kindergarten dinner, except that now I knew how to read, how to write, and behave. Maybe. So moving to Sweden, that, was, that led to a series of events, life-changing events, and I will, that I will never forget. As you can see, I was very excited, not only excited, I was committed to learning about tissue engineering. I was passionate. But there was something else besides passion. There was a drive, something I like to call persistence. Lessons of persistence I've learned through my parents by watching them work extremely hard to raise me and my seven siblings. Eight children, can you believe that? I don't know how they did it. I learned lessons of persistence and perseverance by watching them struggle, by seeing their devotion to us. I've never seen anything similar. More devoted individuals I have not seen. They were devoted to one thing, providing my siblings and I a higher education, something that themselves were not fortunate enough to have. My, my mother, for example, she went on sixth grade. That's where she had to finish her education. That's all she, she was able to, to study. She went over and over again, year after year, on the same class, sixth grade, sixth grade, sixth grade. That was the last class that her village in that little school in Mexico could, could afford. Now imagine, my mom was, she loved education, but she just couldn't have it back then. So she knew something, education is the way for my children to succeed. And they show that by providing us with the gift of education, a gift I will forever be thankful for. I remember that at some point, it was six of us at university. The tuition was getting higher, and so were we. My parents, they, 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 if, if I say struggle, it's underrated. But they had a vision, and they had a dream and they fought for that dream. And now I'm here today because of them. Fast forward 10 years, and I finished my PhD in tissue engineering. A dream I had since I was introduced in 2008. I was part of this community, I've been part of this amazing community of bioprinting for the past seven years, contributing to this amazing and ever-growing community. In two, that same year, 2015, I met Eric Gattenholm. We started working in the same project, meant to be a short project. We quickly realized that there was something bigger than we were thinking. And we were, so to, to our surprise, that ended up to be being the foundation of our company. In, on January 27, 2016, Eric and I founded Selink, the first bioing company in the world. The early team, small team, we had our software wizard, Joachim, we have our master of coins, Gusten, AKA CFO, Eric, our boss man, and me. That was the early team. It was very simple. It's been very simple since day one. We focus on customers. We focus on developing products that have a need in someone's lab. 
and we just get on the doing. We are doers. We believe that the future is built in the present and the future belongs to the doers. There have been many times when things get tough, of course. It's a small company, small team, there's friction. But there's always one thing we keep in mind. Just keep doing. Doing is better than perfect. You don't have to get it right the first time. You just keep doing. That doing influences your mind in a way that is so powerful that even if you lose motivation, just by simply doing will get that motivation back. So we believe that motivation is overrated. 2016, when we launched, launched our company, our first product was the Selling Bio Inc. Now that product, we found immediate success. We believe that because already one hour after we launched this product in our web shop, we got an order. And then the next day we got another order. Essentially started building, customers started building our business. A few weeks went by, a few months went by, and we realized, you know what? Our market is very small. We need to, how do we increase our market? How do we sell more ink? If we're the buying company, how do we make business? We realized that the current, the situation back then was the following. Not many people could get into this field, not because lack of interest, it was because of money issues, lack of uh, capital. Back then, bioprinters ranged from 100 to 200 thousand dollars. Can you imagine? That's a lot of money for anyone. We said, okay, if we want to innovate, if we want to be make make a true true effect, true difference, we need to get as many people as we can. So we decided to launch the world's most cost-effective bioprinter, and that became the incredible. Back when I was doing my PhD, I built my first bioprinter. My professor said, you know what, I don't have that kind of money, so you're gonna have to build it yourself. I said, gladly. So I thought, you know what? I built it once, it didn't look pretty. I was the only user. I think I was the only one that could use it, but hey, if I can do it once, I can do it twice. Now at least I know what not to do, right? So introducing this product to the market, that really gave us the, the advantage to start moving forward, start conquering lab by lab. We, we, we realized that this was a global market. Why? Because in our, in, in our small experiment, the first POs, the first orders that came through, they were from different countries. We said, we hit something. Our vision was this. We wanted to start a movement. Our vision was to have these print bioprinters, these bio, offer this bioprinting technology to hundreds, thousands of labs around the world. And creating a movement is not easy, but it's well worth it. We started selling our printers, our bioings, and so on. By the third month of operations, we were already profitable. Something unheard of almost in the biotech industry. By month 10, 10 months after founding the company, this was in November 3rd, 2016, we did an IPO. Again, this was unheard of. We were moving so fast, we had so much momentum. The vision was clear. We were just running towards it. Again, doing. As you know, it takes one team with the same vision to make things happen. A team that is willing to put the extra hours to go the extra mile to accomplish things. In our company, the vision is clear. The purpose is clear. And it takes individuals with passion that want to make a difference in this world. 
and that feel that they can make a difference in this world. My team, we're close to 40 right now. It's stronger and it keeps getting stronger. Building a bioprinting community, I can tell you that it has been fun. As you can see here, we, we travel, we go lab to lab. Why? Because we want to educate our customers. We want to educate the public how bioprinting is done. And this takes education, this takes, you know, going to, to performing this hands-on. Essentially, the way it works is that you have a bioink and you have your cells in a suspension. And you mix these two components in order to create, in order to suspend your cells in the bioink. Once you have the cells homogeneously embedded in the bioink, then it's ready to print. And you use one of these bioprinters to print the tissue model that you want to, to, to print. In terms of the things that we've been doing up till now, we've been working, for example, with human cartilage. And the process, again, you have a blueprint, which is the form of a human ear. You have a bioink, you put the cells in there, and you have a bioprinter. The bioprinting process of printing a small human ear, it takes about 10 minutes. And you can, the most amazing thing is that you can culture this printed tissue model with living cells, and you can study them, how they behave. Again, this is an evolving process. This process is not static, it's a dynamic process. The green, in, the green dots, you can see the living cells, and you can see that they're, they continue to stay alive during the process. What's more impressive is that they are forming a new tissue. They are forming, in this case, cartilage tissue, as shown by the, by the blue color, which is staining positive for glycosaminoglycans found in cartilage, for example. Another interesting area we've been working on heavily, skin tissue models. Imagine if the possibility of being able to create skin grafts for, for patients that have suffered burns. This is how the cells look inside. In the blue, you see the, the nuclei of the cell. The green is how the cells stretch out. This is a dynamic system, evolving system. The cells are adapting to their tissue. Again, we have a vision, and we envision a future where animals are no longer needed to test and bring forward new medicines. My dream is to translate this technology to the pharmaceutical industry and to the clinic. Simple, maybe not, but we, we want to bring better healthcare treatments to patients in need. This dream we can accomplish together. These are the doers. And we can accomplish this dream by working together, by using our unique expertise between scientists and companies. We are the biological revolution, and it comes down to one thing. We believe that we need to move in order to see the future. It's not that we see the future we need to move, we, we move in order to see the future. And the future is created in the present, and the future belongs to the doers. Thank you. <laughs>